Next, next question right there, and then I'll get over to you. Uh, I have a question about the uh, Oscar for Best Editing. Yeah. How in the world can anyone know where the footage that people have? How would, how would you, I mean, do you all sit around creating war stories on the footage that you had to put together <laughs> and then come up with that? How, how, does, how does that determination? Well, I was the first time that I didn't, I didn't even get mentioned on Hustler. Um, because I was, it was done in New York, don't forget. And we were outsiders. Um, but wasn't that, a, in hindsight, a good thing because of those movies that you I'm got sorry, to work on? In hindsight, wasn't that a good thing that you were an outlander? Absolutely. Because you got to work on some of those movies at the studios, just say, yeah, let's you know, just let them do whatever they want to, and uh, and then they gave you a lot of freedom, well, kind of. They were, no, they wouldn't always let you do what they wanted to, but they uh, still <laughs> took a lot of courage and fighting on the part of directors. The most important thing is to have a director who's able to continue fighting and or someone like Scott Rudin who will help you. You know, in other words, a producer who's really, um, functioning producer who's really very sharp. Warren was on Bonnie and Clyde. I mean, you know, he and Arthur might have had a lot of arguments about it, but they didn't have them in front of people. I mean, I heard a few, but that was because we were finishing, but they didn't have many and they would come to an agreement, as intelligent people do, and, uh, um, I think that's having a good producer is an extremely important thing and very under, 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 it's not understood well what a good producer is. And a lot of producers are merely money people or some of them are relatives or some of them are people who um, <coughs> aren't interested in the directing end. And you took the role of, you got out of editing for a while, for a number of years. In the 90s, you took the role of senior vice president of post-production at Warner Brothers. No, I wasn't. Or whatever that was. I was just a senior. Oh, senior. Well, was that like a bigger thing? Well, no, it was the... Um, huge dollars? Pardon? It was a huge dollar. Well, it was a big dollar. Well, you know, it was a big dollar. 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 It was not, in today's market, it wouldn't be a huge dollar. But for me, it was a nice annuity. <laughs> <laughs> flat sum that would cover me for what I might have made that year and with good increases if it kept going. Uh, so in a way it was very it was very practical. Um, but was it your job to keep to no, just support job, directors? No, I'm the... just gonna tell you. I was hired basically to be the communicator between directors and uh, the studio. studio and the director because so many of the people in the studio did not know how to deal with directors, did not know how to talk to them or to, uh, you know, they felt that I would not be a threat to the director in a sense that I'm always on the director's side. I've always been a director's editor. And so it was a smart thing to do. Um, so your job was essentially to keep people from killing each other. No, that's not true. My job was basically to uh, be a, a, a suit that wasn't a suit in the sense that I was in front office. I was with the director. And I always was with the director. Um, and if things came up in a big fight, you know, between them or something, it was a help to have someone who knew what they were talking about, and I did know what I was talking about, deal with the front office, because so often they don't know what they're talking about. And it must have been a lot harder as the years went on when they started changing regimes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I remember we had a year where we had double present. It was uh, Billy Gerber and uh, oh, good. Get Le and, and, and Leonard, uh, who's my friend? Oh, uh, 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 the, Bonavent the Bonaventura, was, he and Billy were co-presidents one year, and that was a little painful, because Billy was competing maybe more than, than uh, although I don't think he went as far <laughs> as uh, the Bonaventura did, 
But then when the Bonaventure became the head man, it was fine because I, even though we didn't have the same taste in movies, we, we got along very well and we had a very good relationship. And that's important. I love Bob Daly. He was great. He looked you straight in the eye. And if he knew you weren't bullshitting him, he'd listen, you know. It's, uh, you get the respect you command. Really? It's as simple as that. I think you get respect when you command respect and when you know what you're doing. That's the most important thing, is don't become a bullshit artist. You can't talk a great cut, but that's not the same thing as cutting a great cut as editors know. You know, it's not the same thing. Next question. Can I rephrase the question? Uh, what determines exactly, uh, like, how, what decision goes into deciding who the best editor? My best editing well, we were process. talking about the Academy one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I started to tell you the first time I was surprised I didn't get a nomination. But then I wasn't surprised because I realized nobody in New York was getting nominations at that time for anything in the Academy. Uh, that was many years ago. And until it became a director's town, that was a period where it was good for New Yorkers, but that was much later. Um, I, for instance, um, I think against Reds, uh, I think that uh, Mike Kahn won for one of the many Harrison Ford, you know, pictures about, they did those things over and over again. Indiana Jones. What? Indiana Jones. Jones. Right. Indiana Jones. Silver. And to me that was, uh, that was fine because Michael Kahn is a fine editor. And uh, still works on the movie all that. Does Michael work on the movie? Yeah, Ola? always. That's one. Still work on let him work on anything else. It's got to be the movie. <coughs> That's very interesting. Well, he's a fine editor. Uh, uh, I don't remember what the other. Oh, uh, Don Daphne. What was? Oh, Wonder Boys was Curtis Anson. Yeah, he was a fine director. Um, I was lucky, I worked with fine directors, and that's the main thing. I mean, they weren't my pictures, they were their pictures. And I was only one of the people that helped them interpret it, which is my job. Yes, somebody in the corner over there. <coughs> Sorry, everybody over this half of the house is dark, so I can't see. I think there's somebody over on the other side. Just a quick question for advice for you. Young editors coming up. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Well, something about good taste. Have you ever felt that you had to make a compromise and draw the line on any projects? A little closer and slow. Sorry. Have you ever felt that you had to draw the line on content or projects at all? And, or do you, you mean just, do I? Oh, do I draw the line? Yes. yes you draw I would. Line. There's certain films I would not edit. You're right. There are certain ones I probably wouldn't edit if they were terribly either sexist or uh, if they were John Wayne, Wayne waving the flag, I would be interested in that. <laughs> uh, but that's because I'm a left winger. You know, so. <laughs> really, that, you know, that brings up the question of working for uh, Elia Kazan. Uh, oh, well that came up. Uh, some of my friends got together with Although me. America, America could have been an apology for what you well, that's what people say. Yeah. People come up with all sure. these, you know, people who write and don't edit and don't direct come up with all these later things yeah. that don't really happen. <laughs> no, actually, uh, Ali Kazan was one of my favorite directors because he was a psych, his brother, I think, is a psychiatrist, and he was like a psychiatrist. He knew when to bring you roses, and he knew, uh, he never kicked me or did any of the things he so reportedly did with some actors to get what he needed out of them. But he always knew how to, he was always tuned how people were. And I also love that picture because it was the first time I really understood completely um, about, the other, about the other world. I come from a Republican family in Cincinnati, Ohio. My mother was the left winger uh, because she lived in Europe a lot, traveled a lot. Uh, but my family was all very conservative. They were all Republicans. And um, I think that there are film 
things that I would refuse to do if I thought they were they were vicious in any way on that kind of thing. In other words, if it's something funny like uh, thank you for smoking or for not smoking or whatever it is, which is a very funny movie. If you haven't seen it, you ought to. It's very funny. Yeah, it's, just, it's really good. Good movie. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, to answer your question, there are places where I might draw the line. I've never been terribly put in that position because people usually, I'm very straightforward with uh, who I am and what I believe and people who do totally something that would be totally opposite that or that would advocate things that are totally opposite that would not necessarily be interested in having me edit. So you have no problem with the violence of Bonnie and Clyde, for instance? The, uh, the, oh, well, I had a lot of problems with my friends on Long Island. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were impossible. They couldn't understand why I edited such a vicious picture. I remember taking a beating in a house in, was it North Roslyn or someplace? I was there among all my left-wing friends, and I was eaten out for having cut this terrible, violent, vicious film. And I said something. I said, well, I'm sorry that you feel it's that. I don't feel that either my or Clyde were violent or vicious. I think they were caught in a certain situation at a certain time. And if you had any empathy for the characters, you might have seen that. If you didn't see it, then I'm sorry. Then I failed you. you didn't, I didn't do my job properly because you didn't empathize with them. Well, what happened was very obvious. They hated it because their kids looked. <laughs> and it was during that kid period when kids were beginning to kind of take over the, you know, what they wanted to do and what they wanted to see. And, uh, and I think that's really what it was about. It had to do with they hated it because their kids loved it. And I imagine you got the same sort of reaction you did to Alice's restaurant. Which is another one of those so kids love it, but the parents say it is. No, Alice's restaurant wasn't that. That Arlo was. You can't hate Arlo. He's too funny. Uh, it is still got drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> still 1960. I don't know. I don't know. I never had that problem with Alice's restaurant, but I did have that problem with Bonnie and Clyde. It, it rubbed a lot of my left-wing friends very, very badly. They really went after me, and I said, I just don't think you understand the picture. Well, left wing friends would love Alice's restaurant. Pardon? The conservative people would not like Alice's restaurant. <laughs> By the way, you should watch Alice's restaurant again, people. That's it's just a funny movie. One funny movie. Great movie. Another question. Who else is coming? Way over there, so you have to get out, come together. You could be husband and wife by the end of the night. You never know. Mike That's the nice thing about these meetings. People need each other, they love each other. Be the mic runner. Oh, way back there? Lazy bastard. Okay. We'll get to you. Go ahead. Um, do you have any advice for editors that are starting out, maybe in exercise Advice for a director? I mean, you've worked with everyone, so maybe you have some advice that can make your life easier when you're editing. That's a good, that's a good question. Exercises for editors just mm -hmm. starting out? What did you say? She's asking about exercises for editors just starting out. Are there exercises for editors just well, with, starting, with, especially with all the technologies that we have today? That brought us all together called the uh, uh, Final Cut Pro, Final 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 Pro, Pro yeah. which I haven't actually worked on, but my one of my close friends, Stacey Flip, who's been my assistant a lot, was a very good editor. Uh, it looks just like the Adam when it's not purple. Evidently, it works just beautifully. I would think you have all kinds of exercises. I, I never did ask anybody who works on those, what do you use for footage? There was an interesting woman I met in the ladies room before who said, I think she's sitting over there, who said she had turned to film at age 65 because she got, oh yes, it was you. Where? Because she got. Stand up. That's a very cool story. I like that. Great. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, because she got she got um, this this program that you buy, whatever you want. Final Cut Pro. Um, yeah, it's got tutorials and things in it that yeah. you can use. Well, the whole thing is, where do you get the material to cut? It comes with Final Cut Pro. 
<laughs> they give you, yeah, they actually give you some material to uh, play with. Pictures? Uh, yeah, somebody went out and shot some stuff. Oh, use okay. that. It's, yeah, National, is it that National Geographic? Anything else you have to shoot yourself. Oh. Can, I, can I rephrase my question? Sure. I guess um, my question is I'm a teacher and I, I teach um, film. A little, of, little closer and slowly. One of the problems I have is a lot of the students <coughs> like to cut all over the place and they forget how to tell the story. Do you have any advice for them or an exercise that would lead them to see the light of the story? Well, exercise is a wrong word, I think. That would lead you to the story. I, want I think you have to figure out the story and know it, in, you know, know the story completely as a basis, because after all, it starts with the writer. Um, the writer is the most important person on a film, first because they wrote it, it came from them. Um, that's not necessarily true if you're a documentary uh, editor. That's a different thing where you have millions of choices and more freedom. But, um, so I don't understand the word exercises that you would use. I think you're asking, you're, you're, she has high school students? College. Oh, yes. They, they cut all over the Arrogant place. college students. They forget the story, and you said you started with sound. So I was kind of wondering, should I make them edit they sound? They forget the story? Yeah, I don't think they pay attention to the story and they're cutting all over the place. Oh, and what is it that we can do and to tell them to come back to the story? And, oh, well, bitch to the cops. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll do that. I think that's bad bitch teaching. Bitch to the students. I think that's very bad teaching. Oh, no, 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 no. She's a teacher. <laughs> it's not my fault. She's, she's telling you to bitch to the students. Okay, next question. We're going to have about time for about you know, one more or two more, and then Ron, your driver, is waiting for you. Okay. Uh, waiting for me? Ron, the limo driver. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to know Go ahead. I just wanted to know what it was like for you as a woman early on in your career, and what you, what you have dealt with dealing with these directors and egos. And yeah, you have, you have a lot of things that you deal with. I think the most important thing I've always answered the women who ask me this question, it's mostly women who ask that, it's not men. Um, <laughs> was that the hardest thing was to retain your femininity and remember that you're a woman and still be able to, you know, to push hard and be, make decisions the way a man would make them or another woman would make them. In other words, it is hard um, because in my day, they weren't. However, don't forget, there have been fine editors who came out of the Depression, who worked during the Depression, who were women. So in Hollywood, that wasn't totally true. But I was in New York at the time. Um, oh, that was the biggest problem, was being a New Yorker. At the time when, you know, Hollywood paid no attention to what was going on in New York. In New York. And I really only got lucky when all the directors began living in New York. That's when I was lucky. Where did, was, uh, as somebody, I can't remember who it was, but he uh, asked me to ask this question, because it's a good question. Was there a sorority, maybe, uh, with you and Thomas Schoonmaker <laughs> and no, Bernard Fields and Marshall Lucas? I only Lucas met and... Selma many, many years later, because my son, we record to all of Marty's pictures. So he and Thelma are good friends. Uh, but I, I only met her a few times. No. Uh, when I was in New York, it was there weren't many film editors that worked on features. Uh, there was Carl Werner, and uh, a guy named Cunningham was a good editor, but he died young. And Carl, there weren't that many people. Sidney Myers, but he didn't do that kind of film. Uh, those were the more political films, and they were the ones who had the hardest time understanding how I worked with Kazan and Ross, and I said, because I don't sleep with my directors. <laughs> we talk character, we don't, you know. And these are, this was a group of um, left-wing type, very good, bright people who were always questioning it, who, you know, usually were sleeping with their assistants. So, 
you know, it was, it was like somebody asking a sexist question when they were sexist themselves. <laughs> Okay, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, two more questions. I think, did we have somebody way back there? Bob? Uh, Bob? I think they were done when I realized this. Yeah, get the raffle done. Um, I was just wondering the pros and cons of working with the actors in the editing room. Oh, that's disastrous. <laughs> uh, it's not good actors, but most good actors wouldn't really want to work. It's like, uh, I remember when Faye Dunaway came to visit me in one of the kind of rooms, and Steve Rotter was my assistant. He's a fine editor. He was my assistant at the time, and he was thrilled. It was just so excited because Faye Dunaway, Dunaway was coming in. So she came in and she had a very attractive umbrella, which he kept in that cutting room for years. <laughs> and I remember uh, she watched for a little while, but it's very boring. It's like watching paint dry. Have you ever, have you ever sat behind, particularly in the days of Moviola, and tried to watch what somebody was doing? It was totally deadly. You didn't know what they were doing unless they stopped and explained everything. And if they stopped and explained everything, not only would the picture never get cut. I mean, I did that a lot, for students and all, but I did it specially. I would do it at night or I would do it when, you know, on Saturday. I wouldn't do it during working hours because you could spend forever. I love, I love teaching and I love mentoring students, but when you're cutting, um, your mind goes, with the scene, whether you're with a performance or whether you're part of a story or part of, as you said back there, the you know the the drama, um, it's it's a very it's a very difficult thing to watch. It's very boring. So you usually didn't come back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one thing you know, I think I think we're all heard this tonight. You really protective of actors. I mean, you... I love it, actors. Yeah, if you love actors, then yeah. you're going to you're gonna give them their that best well, take. That best take some of their actors. She had been what they call one of those uh, light comedians. And uh, she took me to the movies. I mean, she and I were big movie buffs. And um, I, I, after I came back to the States after living on the Magic Mountain all those years, I came back and lived in the States, and I often lived with my mother when I wasn't with my grandparents, and we would just constantly go to the movies. That was one of the great joys of my life. And she, I remember, for instance, I saw a picture the other night, late at night, with Claire Trevor, who's a magnificent actress. I don't know if any of you would have even heard of her. She's a fantastically good actress. And I remember how my mother would always point out to me how Claire Trevor was one of the best screen actresses there was, because she was. Uh, she was a wonderful actress. And so I, I had, was lucky. I did have someone uh, that I lived with a lot, my mother, who when I was with her had the same kind of fun and interests that I did in movies. And I learned a lot from her. Even though it wasn't often and it wasn't a long period of time, I did learn a lot from her. Well, she did a good job. One last question. Well, I'm going to run and go and get the raffle ticket. Okay, you can okay. answer it. Uh, let's go. Uh, Well, first of all, thank you so much for appearing, uh, for coming down tonight, and I don't know how old you are. Point of reference. Where are you? Just show me. Wait a minute. Stand up. I hate not to be The black guy in the dark. You are a point of reference in school, uh, in terms of editing. But uh, I just, a uh, uh, question, who do you, what editor do you currently uh, uh, enjoy their work? Uh, who's your favorite editor? Oh, I enjoy a lot of editors. Uh, well, I love everything that uh, 
Thelma does because I love everything Scorsese does. So, you know, I, that was what I was watching last night. It was Goodfellas for the hundredth time as Steve said, why don't you come to bed? You've only seen it 82,000 times. <laughs> but I love to watch, uh, I love to watch good movies late at night. Now, what was your question? <laughs> favorite editor. I think you answered it. Well, my favorite editor. Yes. Well, I love, I love the work that Richie Marks does. Obviously, the people who came up with my cutting room, I've always looked at their work. Stevie Rotter and Richard Marks and Ronnie Roos. A lot of people came up through my cutting room, and I was very lucky and honored to have them. And do you have anything out? Uh, do you have a book out? or? No, I never wrote one. How come? Did you ever want to uh, direct? Well, there were, I was asked several times to do it. Not much interest in doing this. Hi. One last question because I have to get this wrap of stuff together, so uh, uh, just pick somebody. Just, I'm not going to be the bad guy. Yeah, over there, they, they get the <laughs> Those people have their hands on the ones that you have uh, not worked with that you admire? Well, some is one. I haven't worked with some. Mm -hmm. Directors. Um, Directors. Directors. Yeah, filmmakers. Filmmakers. Directors. Oh, filmmakers. Um, oh, God, there's so many. There are a lot of directors whose work I like. Um, you ask me off the top of my head, and it's, what is it? 10 o'clock and I'm 82 years old. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> we're all, you know, some of us are happy raised and we're already there, baby. I like Spielberg. Spielberg is a very good director. He's a wonderful director. I like his work. I don't always like his movies, but I like his work. How'd you like working with Paul Newman as a director? Did he hit on you? Oh, Newman's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> it's only kidding. Getting to that point of the night too, where I'm saying things I shouldn't say. These are this is a raffle, and uh, we give away prizes. And uh, one of the things that we do is that we force you to pick the ticket, and uh, and people win these prizes. So how are your eyes, by the way? My eyes are all right. Can you read the? Can you can you bring up the house lights way up, way up, so everybody sees their raffle ticket? Yeah, well, I can't unless I put on the screen. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Everybody, thank you. Yeah.